OpenAI has just unveiled O3 as well as O3 Mini. So on the 12th day of their AI holiday event, the 12 days of OpenAI, they just dropped the announcement for their next generation reasoning models. The one thing to know with this model is it's not available today. It's hopefully going to be available at the end of January. So in this, I'll highlight a number of clips that they had from their announcement. Let's get into it. We're going to announce two models today, O3 and O3 Mini. O3 is a very, very smart model. Uh, O3 Mini is an incredibly small model, but still, uh, but a really good at performance cost. So to get the bad news out of the way first, we're not going to publicly launch these today. Um, the good news is we're going to make them available for public safety testing starting today. Now, O3 is a really strong model at very hard technical benchmarks. And I'm going to start with coding benchmarks. You can bring those in. So on software style benchmarks, we have Sweebench Verified, which is a benchmark consisting of real-world software tasks. We're seeing that O3 performs at about 71.7% .7 accuracy, which is over 20% better than our O1 models. Now, this really signifies that we're really climbing the frontier of utility as well. On competition code, we see that O1 achieves an ELO on this contest coding site called CodeForce is about 1891. At our most aggressive high test time compute settings, we're able to achieve almost like a 27, 27 ELO here. And not just programming, but also mathematics. So we see that on competition math benchmarks, just like competitive programming, we achieve very, very strong scores. So O3 gets about 96.7% accuracy versus an O1 performance of 83.3% on the AME. There's another very tough benchmark, which is called GPQA Diamond. And this measures the model's performance on PhD level science questions. Here we get another state-of-the-art number 87.7%, which is about 10% better than our O1 performance, which was at 78%. Just to put this in perspective, if you take an expert PhD, they typically get about 70% in kind of their field of strength here. One thing that you might notice, yeah, from, from some of these benchmarks is that we're reaching saturation for a lot of them or nearing saturation. So the last year has really highlighted the need for really harder benchmarks to accurately assess where our frontier models lie. And I think a couple have emerged as fairly promising over the last months. One in particular I want to call out is Epic AI's Frontier Math Benchmark. Now, you can see the scores look a lot lower than they did for the, the previous benchmarks we showed. And this is because this is considered today the toughest mathematical benchmark out there. This is a data set that consists of novel, unpublished, and also very hard These to are test. extremely hard. Yeah, very, very hard problems. Even Terrence Tao says, you know, it would take professional mathematicians hours or even days to solve one of these problems. And today, all offerings out there um, have less than 2% accuracy um, on, on this benchmark. And we're seeing with O3, in aggressive test time settings, we're able to get over 25. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg Camrad, and I'm the president of the ArcPrize Foundation. Now, ArcPrize is a nonprofit with the mission of being a North Star towards AGI through and during benchmarks. So our first benchmark, Arc AGI, was developed in 2019 by Francois Cholet in his paper on the measure of intelligence. However, it has been unbeaten for five years. Now, in AI world, that's like, it feels like centuries is where it is. So the system that beats ARC AGI is gonna be an important milestone towards general intelligence. But I'm excited to say today that we have a new state-of-the-art score to announce. O3, it has scored 75.7 on ARC AGI's semi-private holdout set. Now, this is extremely impressive because this is within the uh, compute requirements that we have for our public leaderboard. And this is the new number one entry on ARC AGI Easy. Pub. So congratulations Thank to you that. So much. Yeah. Now, uh, as a capabilities demonstration, when we ask O3 to think longer and we actually ramp up to high compute, O3 was able to score 85.7% on the same hidden holdout set. This is especially important. 87. Sorry, 87.5, yes. This is especially important because um, human performance is, uh, is comparable at 85% threshold. So being above this is a major milestone. And we have never tested a system that has done this or any model that has done this before. And very happy to uh, tell you more about uh, O3 Mini, which is a brand new model in the O3 family that truly defines a new cost-efficient reasoning frontier. For O3 MIDI, we'll support three different options, low, medium, and high reasoning effort. So the user can freely adjust 
the uh, thinking time based on their different use cases. I'm happy to show the first set of emails of all three mini. Um, so on the left hand side, we show the coding emails. So it's like code forces yellow, which measures how good a programmer is, uh, and the higher is better. So as we can see on the plot with more thinking time, all three mini is able to have like increasing yellow all outperforming all one mini. And with like median thinking time, it's able to measure even better than all one. I would like to do a live demo. That sounds great. All three mini. Uh, so, um, and hopefully you can test out all the three different like low, medium, high sure. uh, thinking time great. of the model. But let me paste the prompt. So I'm testing out all three mini high first. And so the task is that I'm asking the model to uh, use Python to implement a code generator and executor. So if I launch this, uh, run this like Python script, it will launch a server um, in the, uh, locally with a, with, a, with a UI that contains a text box. And then we can uh, make coding requests in a text box. It will send the request to call all three mini API and all three mini API will solve the task and return a piece of code and it will then uh, saves the code locally on my desktop and then open a terminal to execute the code automatically. So it's a very complicated, pretty complicated task, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and it outputs like a big chunk of code. So if, if we copy the code and paste it to our server, and then we would like to run, launch this server. So we should get a text box when you're launching it. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, yeah. I, see I hope so. Yeah. It seems to be launching something. Okay. Oh, great. <laughs> we, have a, we have a UI where we can enter some coding prompts. So let's try out a simple one, like train open AI and a random number. So it's sending the request to all three mini median. So it should be pretty fast, right? So mm -hmm. on this 41. terminal, yeah, 41. That's <laughs> the menu yeah. number, right? <laughs> so it saves the generated code to the like, local script. Um, on the desktop and the print out opening in 41. Um, is there any other tasks you guys want to try, test it out? I wonder if you can get it to get its own GPQA numbers. <laughs> that is like, that's a great app. <laughs> just as what I expected yeah. at least a lot yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so now let me copy the code and send it in the UI. So um, in this task, we asked the model to evaluate all three mini with the low reasoning effort on this hard GPQA data set. And the model needs to first download the, the, the raw file from this URL. And then it needs to really figure out which part is a question, which part is a, um, which part is the answer, and or which part is the options, right? Yes. And then formulate all the questions and, to, and then ask the model to answer it and then parse the result and then to grade it. That's actually um, blazingly fast. Yeah, and it's actually really fast because it's mm -hmm. calling the all three mini with low reasoning effort. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. It's two tests are yeah. really <laughs> hard here. <laughs> yeah, the long tail is yeah. the problem. Um, GPQA is a hard data set. Yes. Yeah, it contains like maybe 196 easy problems and two really hard problems. <laughs> yeah. um, While we're waiting for this, do you want to show the what the request was again. Oh, it actually returns the results. Oh, it's 61.62%, uh, 60, 62%, right? Cool. It's a low reasoning effort model and mm -hmm. actually pretty fast. Then full evaluation in the, uh, in the a minute. Um, Somehow very cool to like just ask a model to evaluate itself. Like, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? And if we just summarize what we just did, we ask the model to write a script to evaluate itself um, through, uh, on this like hard GPQA data set uh, from a UI, right? From this code generator and executor created by the model itself in the first place. Next year, we're going to bring yeah. you on and you're going to have to improve, ask the model to improve itself. Yeah, yeah let's <laughs> definitely ask the model to improve it next time. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, um, so um, besides code forces and GPQA, the model is also a pretty good um, um, math model. So we, we show on this plot, uh, with like on this Amy 2024 data set, all three mini low achieves um, comparable performance with O1 mini and all three mini median achieves like 
comparable better performance than all one, we check the solid bar, which are pass all ones, and we can further push the performance with all three mini high, mm -hmm. right? And on the right hand side plot, when we measure the latency on this like anonymized O1 preview traffic, we show that O3 mini low drastically reduce the latency of O1 mini, right? Almost like achieving comparable latency with uh, GPT 4.0. Yeah. Whereas under a second, so probably it's like instant mm -hmm. response. Uh, and also 3 mini median is like half the latency of O1. Um, and here's another set of evals that I'm even more excited to, to show you guys is um, uh, API features, right? We get a lot of requests from our developer communities to support like function calling, structured outputs, developer messages, uh, all mini series models. And here, uh, all three mini will support all these features, same as all one. Um, and notably, it achieves like comparable better performance than for all on most of the evals, uh, providing a more cost effective solution to our developers. Um, and if we actually unveil the true GPQA diamond performance that I ran a couple of days ago, uh, it actually also means that it's actually 62%, right? Basically, as a model to evaluate itself. Yeah. Right? Next time, you should totally just ask model to automatically do the evaluation instead of us doing it. Yeah. So um, with that, um, that's it for Alter Mini. And I hope our users can have a much better user experience than already next year. Fantastic work. Thank you really so much. Good. To sum this up, O3 Mini and O3. Apply, please, if you'd like, for safety testing to help us uh, test these models as an additional step. We plan to launch O3 Mini around the end of January and full O3 shortly after that. But uh, that will, you know, the more people can help us safety test, the more we can uh, make sure we hit that. So please check it out. Uh, and thanks for following along with us with this. It's been a lot of fun for us. We hope you've enjoyed it too. Merry Christmas. Let me know what your thoughts are from this announcement. How do you think this will affect coding and software development in 2025? Otherwise, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.